No. No, stay where you are. Do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is... The Haunting Hour. Murder is my business. Tomorrow is a word full of mystery, for not even the wisest seer can tell you what tomorrow brings. And today you stand on its threshold, waiting for what? Ah, yes, you say, but nothing will happen to me. And I say in reply that as surely as you doubt, one of your tomorrows, and maybe more, will be filled with adventure beyond your maddest dream, and I have proof. Listen. This is the story of one tomorrow, of what happened to a girl named Maggie Stewart. And like all stories of sudden, unexpected adventure, hers has a prologue. You will not understand this prologue, for like Maggie, you are shrouded with the darkness of the unknown that is tomorrow. It begins on a streamliner, its silver nose pointing south, its wheels humming with speed. And in the prologue are two people, identities unknown, a man and a woman. The man sits stiffly on seat seven in car 13. He is silent, on his face an expression of impatience. At last he gets up, walks quickly to the end of the coach, turns down the narrow corridor, and stops at the curtained doorway of the ladies' lounge. And then he says, Maggie, don't be a fool. Come to your seat. I won't, Carl. I won't. We've got to get off this train at the next stop. I tell you, I can't go on. That imagination of yours is driving me crazy. For heaven's sake, stop thinking about it. Come to your seat. I won't. I don't want to be killed. I'm not ready to die. Good night, Aggie. You're just plain silly. But he's on the train. I know he is. You've got to believe me, Carl. Well, I don't. You've seen him dozens of times before. I thought you did. He got on this train when we did in New York. You're scaring yourself into a fit. Now stop it. Somebody's going to notice. I don't care. I'm getting off this train, do you hear? I'm not going to stay here and be murdered. All right. All right. The next station. Anything to stop all this foolishness. We can take another train. We can watch and see if he gets off, too. And if he does, we... What is the next station? Uh, little town. Roslyn, I think. Then it's settled. Are you coming to your seat? No. Well, I'm going to take a nap. You'd better wake me when we get there. I paid for that blooming seat, and I'm going to sit in it. Two people on a train, and their companion is death. But what has all this to do with Maggie Stewart? Give patience to your ear. Listen. The streamliner comes to a stop. The station is marked Roslyn. It is strangely empty. A girl comes running up the platform stairs, a small suitcase in one hand, a white silk scarf in the other, and a large black purse under her arm. She looks hastily down the line of coaches. A single porter is leaning out from the steps of a car just ahead. No one is getting off the streamliner. The girl catches her breath. This way, miss. All aboard. Train to Greenville? Sure is, miss. Oh, I made it. She climbs the steps of car 13. The porter reaches for her suitcase, but she darts it onto the platform, peers through the door window. The coast is clear. So far, so good. She pushes hard on the stubborn door, makes a few cautious steps in the narrow corridor, and quickly goes through a curtain doorway into the washroom. She has escaped the porter, but still she is not alone. A woman stands against the wall, her face strained with fright. Was that town, Rosalind? Yes, it was. Oh, I'm out of breath. I nearly didn't make it. What's the next stop? Uh, I think Pell City, but but maybe this train doesn't stop there. I'm not sure. Oh, me, I ran all the way. You came in so suddenly. You frightened me. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. Uh, ring the porter's bell there and he'll come for your bag. Uh, oh, no, I'll, uh, I'll just slip it in here against the wall. I- I'm not going very far. Oh, that's a gun. Oh, don't think I'm a criminal or something. I, I had it 
it wrapped in this scarf here so nobody would see it until I could put it away. And now I... What would a young lady like you be doing with a revolver? Well, now, that's exactly what I told Aunt Margaret people would say. Oh, here, I'll put it in my pocketbook. Aunt Margaret's so old-fashioned. Imagine. She came flying down to the station just to give me that revolver. Why? Oh, I don't know. Uncle Jim used to make her carry it. Uh, He was on the road so much, so Aunt Margaret... Well, she's very fond of me, and I took it just to please her. Uh... Is something the matter? You look... Oh, oh no, I'm all right, thank you. It's it's the train, the, the motion. Oh, well, maybe a cup of water. Oh, no, it's nothing. Don't think about it. You you said you weren't going far. How far? <laughs> Just four hours from here. To spend a whole week on a farm, a few miles outside of Greenville. A, a girlfriend of mine has it. Oh, vacation? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's all so unexpected. That's why I nearly missed the train. Maybe... Why, uh, why don't you sit down here? Maybe you'll feel better sitting down. Oh, I'm quite all right now. I'd rather stand. Oh. Well, uh, I work in the Roslyn Library. I didn't start there till last March, so I'm not really entitled to a vacation this year. But with the holidays coming like they do, Mrs. Hart said I might have the time off. Uh, is this a vacation for you, too? You might call it that. Guess you're used to riding trains. Oh, has the conductor been by to take the tickets? I don't know. I can't really remember. Oh, I really am in a fix. At the last minute, I couldn't get a reservation. Only a ticket for the coach train tonight. You mean you don't have a seat? Mm-hmm. Uh, wait, listen. Well, what is it? Well, there, there's a man on this train that I've been avoiding. Uh, would you look out in the corridor for me? I think I heard him. Let's just see if there's a man out there. All right. I- is he somebody you know? Uh, not a soul there. Well, to tell you the truth, he frightens me a little. But it's nothing. So you don't have a reservation? No. Do you think they'll put me off? Oh, Aunt Margaret said they were sure to, but I do have a ticket. I don't know. I hear they're very strict. Well, I thought because I'm not going very far that I I could just stay in here. Well, there's no need for you to do that. Take my seat for a little while. Oh, no. I I couldn't do that. Oh, I insist. I'd be happy for you to have it. In a way, you'd be doing me a favor, and I really can't sit there the most of the car. I'd be much better off in here lying down. Oh, but I, I don't think it's right for me to deprive you. But you're you. not depriving me. And this trip means more to you anyway. I would hate to be kicked off. Then you run along. Number seven on the right. There's a middle-aged man on the opposite seat. He's probably sound asleep snoring. Uh, well, you're sure now that I'm not... Well, I, I suppose I could wait till we're nearly to Greenville and, and then give the conductor my ticket and explain Of it. course. And then if it puts you off, it'll be all right. You'll be where you're going. You run along now. Well, I will then. Thank you so much. Oh, I suppose my suitcase will be all right here. I'll watch it for you. Oh, here, here, don't forget your purse. <laughs> and add Margaret's ominous revolver. <laughs> Thank you so much. Goodbye for now. I'll see you later on. And I do hope you're better. Uh, number seven? That's right. Where the man is asleep. <laughs> Maggie Stewart sits quietly, her eyes following the swift-moving landscape of trees and hills. Directly in front of her is a sleeping man, but he is silent now, his head tilted back on the seat. There's something about him, something eerie. Faint chatterings come from the other occupants of the car. At last, the train slows down and stops. And Maggie notices the station is Pell City. Still, the man opposite her does not move. The train starts again. The cars groan and jerk. And then, like a picture in slow motion, the man slides from the seat into a limp mass of death at her feet. what this is all about. No use looking for his pulse, conductor. Man stone dead. Oh, please. Please help me out of here. Step up for the seat. Stand back, please. Let the young lady out. Uh, You're right. He is dead. Shot. Uh, Who are you? Name's Wayne O'Hara, detective sergeant, New York City. Murder's my business. Murder? Good night. Yeah, quiet, quiet. Let's have quiet here, please. Well... This is a case for the police. Young lady, do you know anything about this? Oh, no. No, no, sir. He... I thought he was asleep. 
She said he wasn't. And then when the train jerked like that... Who said he was asleep? Oh, the woman in the lounge. This is her seat. I was only sitting in it. Oh, where's your seat? I, I, I don't have one. I got on at Roslyn. No reservation, huh? Do you know this man? No. I never saw him before. Never. You got a ticket? Yes, sir. Right here in my purse. You see, I'm only going to Greenville, Conductor, and I thought... Yeah. What's the matter? Oh, his purse. It isn't mine. It belongs to that woman in the lounge. I, I must have picked it up by mistake. Hmm. Mighty funny. Well, she's there in the lounge. She, she wasn't feeling well. My suitcase is there, too. Well, we'll soon find out. Uh, Detective... Uh, Sergeant O'Hara. Uh, you take charge. I'll be right back. Uh, stand back, please. Let me buy you. Uh, stand back. What's your name? Uh, Maggie Stewart. Oh, I don't know anything about this, honestly. Let's see that first. Here. Must be a card. Some kind of an indication. Ah, yes, here's a wallet. This is Leonard Carl Tatum, New York City. Is that the woman's name? I don't know. I, I didn't ask her name. Let's see. Uh-huh. Bag up there on the rack. Initials L-C-T. Well, might be hers. Oh, please. I, I can't stand here looking at him. Well, then sit down, Miss Stewart. Over here. Oh, please, lady, don't block the aisle. Oh, that poor girl, she's white as a sheet. I have some smelling salts in my bag up there. Oh, no, I'll, I'll be all right, thank you. Uh, but... There's nobody in the ladies' lounge, nobody at all. Oh, but she must be. Would you know her if you saw her again? Oh, yes, of course I would. And no suitcase in the lounge either. Nothing. Well, then where is it? I left it there, right there. Well, you just didn't see it. Well, here's the dead man's wallet, Conductor. It was Leonard Carl Tatum, also of New York. His purse belongs to his wife. Well, then she's the woman I talked with, don't you see? You've got to find her. She's on the train somewhere. There, there now, young lady. Take it easy. Oh, look. Look there under the seat, the one I was sitting in. Hmm. Well, well. Uh, don't touch it, Conductor. It might be fingerprints. Here, let me. I'll use this handkerchief. The murder weapon. A six-shooter. Equipped with a silencer. Well, don't look at me like that. I don't know how it got there. I, I never saw it before. Oh, please search the train. Yes, I'd suggest you do, Conductor, before the next stop. Oh, she killed him. I know she did. That's why That's why she said he was sleeping. She, she wants you to think I did. No, no. That's for the police to decide. Oh, but it's so true. It's so clear now. There's no use searching for her. Why do you say that? Because now I understand what happened. She switched pocketbooks with me. She insisted I take her seat. And then when the train stopped at Pell City, she took my suitcase and got off. She planned it all so I'd be accused of murder. When Maggie Stewart, off on a vacation, boarded the streamliner without a reservation, she started on an amazing adventure of murder. In the ladies' lounge, Maggie met an older woman who offered her her reservation. And sitting there, Maggie was horrified when the man on the seat opposite, whom she had thought asleep, fell in a heap on the floor, dead. When the conductor arrived, and with him a man who identified himself as Sergeant Wayne O'Hara of the New York Police, Maggie discovered she was carrying the pocketbook belonging to the woman, a Mrs. Tatum who had disappeared from the lounge, taking Maggie's suitcase with her. Then she realized it was planned. Planned so that she, Maggie Stewart, would be accused of murder. It is a few minutes later, when the conductor, Sergeant O'Hara, and Maggie have gone the length of the train in search of the mysterious Mrs. Tatum, wife of the dead man. Well, that does it. If she's not here in the club car, she's certainly not on this train. I knew it was no use, Conductor. I tell you, she got off at Pell City. I know she did. I think Miss Stewart's right, Conductor. Well, then I'll have to turn everything over to the police in Greenville as soon as we get there. Forty-five minutes from now. And they'll arrest me. What'll I do? Now, now, might be the whole thing will clear itself up. Sergeant O'Hara, since you're a representative of the law, do you mind taking over the custody of this young lady till we get to Greenville? Glad to, Conductor. And that uh, lethal weapon, you better hold on to that, too. All right, Conductor. I guess I better go, then, and get my passenger settled down. Mr. O'Hara, what am I going to do? I'll just sit down in this chair. Relax. And don't worry. But what'll they do to me? Oh, oh it's my scarf. It, it's caught on something. You're typing, I think. Oh. Well, that's a novel way of handcuffing a young lady, isn't it? Uh, there. Now you're free again. Uh, and just sit down. Take it easy. But I don't... Un I mean... What's the matter? Mr. 
Peter O'Hara. Uh, that is your name, isn't it? Detective Sergeant Wayne O'Hara, New York. You don't think I killed the man, do you? Frankly, no. We could only find her. It's awful when your hands are tied like this, when you can't... Oh, but you can, Miss Stewart. Can what? You can at least look for her yourself. Oh, but we have. We, we look... No, no. Oh. I mean back in Pell City where she got off. Oh. Why not? Find her. Prove your innocence. You wait till the Greenville police get going, it might be too late. I haven't got cuffs on you. You go back with me? Back to Pell City? You say the word. Yes, but how'd we get off the train? Oh, that wouldn't be hard. Look out the window. We're in the mountains. On the upgrades, we'll slow down. Oh. That's only a suggestion. I've always been a man of action myself. Murder's my business. And I'd like to see these things, too. And now I'm afraid murder's my business. All right, Sergeant O'Hara? Let's go. Hey, you two all right back there? If them tools get in your way... Oh, no, it's all right. We're very thankful for this lift. Uh, how long will it take to Pell City? Oh, now, uh, about half hour, I reckon. I just you to relax and enjoy the scenery. Quite a pretty country around here, about. Funny old cutter, isn't it? Sergeant O'Hara, do, uh, do you really think we're doing the right thing? How can we ever find her? How many hotels are there in Pell City? Uh, I don't know. Must be a dozen, maybe 20. Why? Well, she's in one of them. Bound to be. A woman who's just killed a man? She's nervous. What she wants to do is go somewhere and be alone. Think. Pull herself together. Well, maybe that's so, but who will you ask for? She's certainly not going to be registered as Mrs. Tatum. No, you're quite right. But it's really very simple. Simple? What do you mean? She walked off with your pocketbook, didn't she? Well, we'll ask for Maggie Stewart. <laughs> Miss Maggie Stewart, please. Stewart. S-T-E-W-A-R-T. Maggie Stewart. Hello. Uh, let me speak to Miss Stewart, please. Stewart? We have several Stewart. Uh, her first name is Maggie. Uh, maybe she's registered as Margaret. No, Margaret Stewart, but we do have a Miss Maggie Stewart. Room 520. I'll ring her. Oh, no. No, don't ring her. I'll, um, I'll drop by to see her. Thank you. You're welcome, madam. Oh. oh, dear. What do I do now? Oh, Maggie Stewart, have you lost your nerve? Uh. Uh. Operator, give me the police, quick. Hello. Hello, this is Mrs. Leonard Carl Tatum speaking. What I've got to tell you is a matter of life and death, so listen carefully. In Greenville, the police are searching for a girl who calls herself Maggie Stewart. Yes, she murdered my husband. In a few minutes, I'll be at the McMillan Hotel. I'll be wearing a white silk scarf. If you follow me, I'll lead you to Maggie Stewart. But if you interfere, if you stop me, she'll get away again. Be at the McMillan Hotel in ten minutes. Oh. Sergeant O'Hara, quick, I found her! After all, Mr. You know, I'm just a bellboy around here. I ain't supposed to let anybody in these rooms. Sergeant O'Hara, look. My suitcase on the bed. And it is the woman from the train. Yes, but where is she? Gone. Oh. Went out about two hours ago. You know where? I might, if I was encouraged to remember. Yeah. Here's five bucks. Remember? Middle-aged woman, wasn't she? Uh, kind of tall, well-dressed. Oh, that's right. But, but where'd she go? She sent me out to rent a car. Said she was going to drive over to Lake Wynette. Ask me how to get there. Lake Wynette? Why would she go there? Oh, I see. Listen, we'll rent a car. We hurry, we can make it before nightfall. Now I know where she is. But I don't understand, Sergeant O'Hara. Please tell me what this is all about. Only a matter of deduction, Miss Stewart. I happen to know this lake. Uh, There's only one house on it. So Mrs. Tatum must be there. But how could you know? I'm frightened. Well, you're stopping. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll walk up. We'll surprise her. Then, uh, uh, then let me stay here in the car. I'll, I'll wait for you. No, no. We've gone this far together. You've got to come. Sergeant O'Hara, wait. What is it, Mr. Stewart? I... I know you're not a detective. Of course. I thought you did. Ever since we started for this place. Tell me, how'd you find out? 
When did I give myself away? In the train. My scarf caught on your typing. It's initials. The letters don't stand for Wayne O'Hara. Ah, you're clever. I'm a fool. Forgot to take it off. All right, come on. We're wasting time. There's going to be another murder. Oh, please let me go. There's no one here. The house is dark. There's a car in the drive. Under the trees. Come along. There's a side door. You... You have a key to this place. Who are you? Who? In a moment, we'll be inside. Keep quiet. Don't talk. Stand behind me. Still got this gun in my pocket. Gun for the train. Come on. Follow me. Stand where you are if you move out. Oh. I can see you both in the open doorway. Close it. Go on, close it. Now then. I knew you'd follow me, Mr. Donald Graves Lambert. And tell Freddy I said he's determined to find me and why not let him? What better place to have this whole thing over with than at his own country house? You do know all about me, don't you, Mrs. Tatum? This is your house? Didn't you suspect that, Miss Stewart? Why'd you bring that girl? You're a coward. But I didn't fool you, did I, Mr. Lambert? No. Miss Stewart, this woman knew I was out to kill her. She suspected I was on a train. That's why she hid in the lounge. But how did you know your husband was dead, Mrs. Tatum? I saw him. Around the corner of the corridor when I mustered up enough nerve to step outside the lounge for a moment. And there was something about it. Oh, that... please. Please let me go. You'll never leave this house alive, Miss Stewart. Oh. In a moment, I'll turn on the lights for Mr. Lambert's benefit. It would be a shame for him to die without seeing the woman who killed him. She's right, Miss Stewart. I knew her husband, but I haven't the faintest notion what Mrs. Tatum looks like. She counted on that when she gave you her seat. She thought I'd kill you. And then from the pocketbook, you'd be identified as Mrs. Tatum. Oh, please, I, I beg of you. I, I know nothing of all this. I'll never say a word if you only... Miss Stewart, you're forgetting. You're wanted for murder. If she kills me, she'll kill you to cover up. Because killing you, Mr. Lambert, is the only way to avenge my husband's brutal death. Brutal? <laughs> for him, no death could be brutal enough. You and he, Mrs. Tatum, killed my wife. As surely as you're standing there, you murdered her. You're crazy. You drained her of one fortune with your lecherous blackmailing schemes. And when her money was gone, when you threatened to expose her little misunderstanding to me, she took the shortest road she knew. How much she loved me. This woman you killed. And before she died, she told me about you and your husband. And it's taken me a year to find you. Twelve months of searching for this night. You know more than I thought you knew, Mr. Lambert. Now look at me. Take one good last look. Oh, and one of the three It was in your purse. Remember, Miss Stewart? Yes, and I remember something else. Mr. Lambert. Mr. Lambert. Keep your hands up. Don't move. Aunt Margaret's revolver and all its life, it never had a bullet in it. That's not true. That's not true. Yes, Mrs. Tatum, it is true. But this gun now, this gun that killed your husband, this gun has only one bullet missing. You better put up your hands. Oh, Mr. Lambert, don't. It, it's no use. I didn't tell you, but I called the police. Okay. Pick him up. We heard everything you said. It's better than any confession I ever came across. All right, keep him up there, Mrs. Tatum. Well, Miss Stewart, cleverer than I thought. Double cross me, huh? I thought you were trying to help, but you weren't. You were only using me to find... to kill Mrs. Tatum. Officer, this man is a murderer. Yes, officer, you're quite right. You've got a score to even with her, too. i got to warn you. Anything you yes, say... Yes, we know, we know. But listen, this young lady here was wrongly accused. She had nothing to do with any of it. We heard all that from outside. All right, come on. We're going to take you two in. Then uh, I can go, officer? Sure, after a few questions. Oh. We got you to thank for everything. Well, what else could I do? I was accused of murder, so murder was my business. Shadows and stillness, mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubts and fears. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory in the haunting hour. 